Welcome to Relinking Blend Files. In this video, you will make a commit. Trust me at this point, there's possible data frustration, almost inevitable if you don't make some sort of go back point. So whether it's a commit, whether you're zipping up your data folder, your current working folder, just make sure you've got a backup before you do anything like this, because it's potentially highly destructive. Understand the order you need to do things in if you wish to change a linked file or its data blocks. And we'll also see what happens if you change it. So first of all, moving or renaming blend files. Make a commit so that if something does go wrong, you can go back to it. Copy the files to a new location, even if that means they're in the same location, or an entirely new folder that doesn't matter but what does matter is we do not remove the originals at the moment they must stay there rename the copied files appropriately so if you've made a fundamental change then obviously you can rename them or in my case that i'm about to go through i just want to shorten the names and make them neater doing it in any other order will break links any links broken when you save the blend file will be lost forever which of course will result in more work reconstructing and as we've seen with the uh, with certainly with my Gothic church so far there are a lot of parts that are reused there are only about eight in total that do the whole building and uh, certainly the window parts and the blank wall paint if those links were broken i'm going to have to put a lot more parts back into my model i don't want to do that then we've got moving or renaming data blocks. This isn't so straightforward. It's a completely different method to preserving them should you want to move or rename them. Remember, make a commit so you can roll back at any point. Copy the files. Then open up that copy and make your data block adjustments. So you might want to change the mesh name of an object or even the object name. Or perhaps you want to change the material name sign it wasn't appropriate but you need to make these adjustments in the copy then we'll go ahead and link the new file into the scene make links to the new object replacing the old one and then finally you can go ahead and delete or archive the old blend file and that as we will shortly see will happily remove that link from blender anyway by the act of doing that on the next save so let's go experience all of this and hop on over into Blender. Okay, so back in Blender, the first thing that I'm going to do is demonstrate what happens if we do something to an existing Blend file that's linked into our scene. So let's go ahead and go to the file system here and I'm going to do the front door because it's one of the least used pieces. So if something goes wrong, at least then I can sort it out. So I've got church front door here. If I go ahead and delete the numbers at the end of it, which is one of the things I want to do, because I'm, I think I'm going to go for more of a standard format with these. I'm going to accept that they're going to be 2x4 or 2x2 or 4x4. And the thickness, I'm going to stick at, again, 0.2s or maybe even multiples of 0.2. But as long as I know there's a standard across the building that I'm doing, I shouldn't have to put in all these extra details. Okay, so now that I've renamed that, if we get, went ahead and reopened our church, there we go. The front door has disappeared, and I think it's used over here as well, so that one has also disappeared. And we can have a look in the outliner itself. We can see that the parts, there's actually an empty there now in the parts, and that, no doubt, will be the church door so here we go having a look in the outline of the church door is now an empty where it used to be now if we go ahead and save the blend file at this point in time we will destroy that link forever we'd have to relink the church door into the scene which is not always a bad thing but imagine having to do that for something that's repeated 
couple of hundred times. I'm not sure how often in this scene so far the blank wall piece is used, but it's used an awful lot, and I wouldn't fancy having to reconstruct it all because I've made a silly mistake of moving something. So, instead of doing that, what we can do is go back, and um, I am just going to highlight those numbers. Fortunately, the naming convention meant I could just do that because we named our file the same as we named the mesh data and the object data. So now that I've renamed that, that should restore the file. The important thing is that you don't go ahead and save. That's easy to do. Um, for instance, you may not notice that a wall piece, uh, sorry, you will notice if a wall piece is missing, but if you've got a small, uh, let's say a candle or something in the scene and you're looking at it from the outside and you're making some changes from the outside, you might not notice that disappearing. So now that we've reverted and we've changed the name back, we've got the door back there. So if we wanted to move our object, the first thing to do is make sure that we're using relative or absolute paths. Now by default it's using a relative path, which basically means that it's not reliant on whether or not um, you're in the exact user directory on a particular computer. What it does mean is as long as all of the stuff is grouped in a similar way on every computer, so in this case I have my project folder and meshes, as long as, uh, and the other folders are associated there, as long as that folder structure still exists on another computer, it will work. So let's go ahead and just check what we've got. So when I go and link a file, there, on where the operator panel would usually sit on the lower left hand side, we've got relative path ticked. And that will be ticked by default. And we will also want to leave it ticked. So we will leave it ticked. I'm going to click cancel to come out of there. We've checked that. So the first thing that we'd need to do if we wanted to move information about or rename, and renaming is what I'm going to do, so I don't have to type too much. Let's go to the file system and copy the blend file. Now that we've copied the blend file, we can just rename it. And for speed purposes, I'm going to call it church front door CFD, lowercase. Now, case does matter. It is case sensitive. What we don't want to do is inadvertently break something by not getting the case right. So I've named it CFD. Hopping back into Blender, I can then go to the data blocks in the outliner. Once I'm in the data blocks, we'll need to go and find the libraries. Now, this is going to look a bit messy. We think we've named everything, and in fact, we've missed something. These libraries, but that's okay because they're hidden away. Uh, but since we're here, we can actually go in and name them. Now, I've gone into the center a few times, so I know straight away at my library 004 is the door. And we can see the file path down here links to the door itself. Now, because the data blocks uh, in the file itself have not changed, all we've done is move the file position, we can update this to the new name or even the new position if we moved it to a, another folder. First thing I'm going to do is actually call it front door on the library so that I know what it is just by looking at it. So if I need to come back later, I know where it is. And we can see here it's a relative path, so two slashes, dot dot, meshes, and then we've got the file name there. So one of the reasons why I want it shorter is sort of this area and a few other areas in Blender, you I can't widen that, so it's just too long. So we had it church front door. I'm just going to go back and make sure, oh, no, that wouldn't work. You do have to make sure this is named perfectly. So if it does mean you look here and then you hop back and go cfd.pen, cfd.blend, lowercase, etc. It's in the meshes folder. Well, I've not changed anything there, so that should be absolutely fine. What we can now do is go ahead and save the blend file. Don't make a mistake. And <laughs> don't make a mistake. Try, do double check that you've got this right before you click save and then go ahead and let's reopen the file again and all should be okay if you're doing things like this for your own sake do them one at a time and commit in between each one so that if you do make a mistake you know where you've made a 
mistake and you can just go back to that point. If you've got to change all of these pieces out or just move them all to a new folder and you're doing this to keep it nice and sane for you, then of course you will need to make that commit in between because what you will want to do is do the whole lot again. Okay, so now that we've done that, the other thing is if we do a data block, now that's something slightly different. Again, we need to take a copy of the file. So let's take a copy of the CFD file in this case. So I'm going to take a copy of that file, and it's going to be called CFD2. That's really, really deep. And I'm going to rename the mesh data here actually what I want to call it. So instead of uh, going down this route, I'm going to rename the blend file in a moment. I want to call this um, level of detail A, since it's a lower poly mesh, it's a very basic mesh. And I want to call this then front door. I know it's a church because that's what I'm building. You may uh, call it whatever is appropriate for your particular model, but uh, front church, that's great, isn't it? I'll say the word church, so I type it. Um, L-O-D-A, because it's the basic model, front door. Don't need any more details than that. I'm going to go in and update the mesh data as well to reflect the same name. That, at the moment, is important. Now, CFD2 is not the right name at all, so I'm going to go ahead here and go save as and I'm just going to call it front door again it is explicit that um, underscore in there it is explicit that it's going to be a church that I'm working on I could even move it into a church folder if that was at all necessary so I'm going to save that and go back to my file system quickly and do a tiny bit of clearing up I'm going to delete the CFD2 that I created okay so now when I go back into the scene itself, the Gothic church scene, I'm going to have to link that new file in. Meshes, front door, object, LODA, front door. And then we could pick le higher levels of detail if necessary. So we're going to pull that in, it's come in, and we're going to make it a proxy. And it's on layer two here, which is absolutely fine. Oh, the ground is not on the appropriate layer. So let's move that to layer one, so it's all together. We'll get grounds back on. So in order to take that object data from that newly imported object, what we need to do is first select the ones that are going to receive that data, which is, oh, we don't want that corner piece, which are these two front doors. I'm not doing very well with selecting. There we go. Uh, now I've selected those two, I'm going to turn on this other layer, which has got the last door on, and select it. So the active object has to be the one giving the data. And then we can go to Object and Make Links. And we can see the shortcut there is Control and L. And this is where we go Object Data. Now nothing would have really changed because they're both the same actual mesh underneath, they're just called something different. If we go ahead and save the file now and come out of Blender completely and let's go here. Now that's named CFD so I'm going to delete, I'm going to take a punt here that I've done that correctly, I'm going to delete church front door and CFD completely from my archive. I can do that safely because I've made a commit. And then I'm going to make sure I save and revert. There we go. It's still there. They haven't disappeared. Now you can use this for other things as well. So say I wanted to replace this wall piece at the very top because they're modular, they're all the same size. It means that I can then select the door down at the bottom Go Control and L and do the object data. And when I do the object data, you can see it replaces it. And that is incredibly powerful. It allows you to modify your project very, very quickly. And as you saw in that list there, there are some other things you can do as well. So say we came up with a, a, a an awesome color for uh, the church itself. So I'm going to create a new material on this wall piece here. Now it's going to apply to every single wall piece that that has inherited, which is the rest of the wall pieces in the model. And let's let's just say we've, we've made it an awesome orange 
and let's call it Awesome Orange. My new favourite colour, Awesome Orange. And I'm going to hop into Materials just to make sure that's applied. That's quite bright. And say we wanted that on all of the uh, well, vaults. That's I keep forgetting what these things are called. We would select the vaults first, all of them, if we wanted it on every single one. And then, and only then, we would click on the donor. And then we'd go Control and L and select materials. And there we go, it's in the material. Very, very powerful and can save an awful lot of work having to assign those individually. Brilliant. Okay guys, I'd like you to check your naming and filing. So ensure all the basic building blocks are named appropriately. I'm going to be using the prefix LOD underscore A for mine, which means it's the lowest level of detail model I'll be working with. Make your names as concise as they need to be. So I have personally decided that I don't need the prefix church since the whole project is going to be about church. If you're doing a different type of interior, maybe kitchen or something like that, name your project folder appropriately rather than having the individual name tagged on the beginning of the bar. It's entirely up to you. This is one of those things that's of more of a personal taste. And I've decided the numbers at the end might just be a bit funky. So I'm going to cut those off as well. I know that all of my building blocks for this particular scene are going to be uh, 4x4 or 4x2 or 2x2. So they're going to fit together nicely. And I'm going to stick to that standard width of 0.2 unless it's some sort of special part. In which case it's probably not going to be modular anyway. It's going to be a special part. The method for data blocks, by the way, works if you're renaming and moving the whole file too. So if you're going to be doing both of those tasks and not just an organizational task, then you will probably be better off doing the second method. But do them one at a time and remember to commit or back up your work before you do it because it can be very destructive. What I don't want you guys to do is obviously have to repeat a load of work because you made a tiny mistake in naming something. And this is going to be another one of those lectures where I'm going to leave you to it. I'm going to go off and rename all of my files and I will see you guys in the next lecture.